All right, hey, what's going on, guys? This is Mist, and today we're going to be going over the patch notes that just came out for the upcoming season of Souls update. I haven't looked through this at all or anything. I have no clue other than things that they've already teased. I don't have any inside information going in either. Um, so Hyra's already teased quite a bit of what they're going to do. We haven't gotten to see exactly what's going to be happening here, but they've talked a lot about balance changes where they want to be taking down overall DPS across the map. They want to be making tank stats weaker, DPS stats weaker than that. And I'm trying to think other than that, that's that's really the main focus as far as what they revealed is that they were generally going to be nerfing power by 30 percent and prots by like prots and health by like 15 percent, which really might end up making it too much of a tank meta. Like I actually normally when people say tank meta, it's basically just tanks are actually good. It hasn't very often actually been tank meta every once in a while. It has normally when people complain tank meta, it's because soul lanes actually competent um, with with warriors. So. I'm a little bit worried that it's going to become actual tank meta. You guys can deal with it, okay? It's actually pretty easy to fix tank meta. When it's a real tank meta, it doesn't last that long. Um, so, so yeah. So, we'll dive on in. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is a new tier 5 skin. I don't normally care about skins at all or anything. I just saw a little teaser of this. I think this is a new tier 5 skin that's supposed to be, like, different. It, it just It's a Fenner skin where you have, like, a rider and you can, like, do something to change Fenner or something. I don't know. I don't know. It's one of those. It's one of those crazy tier five skins. They got a little wild with it. Some people might be hyped about that. Um, so this we're going to skip past it. Battle pass stuff. We're going to skip past it. Quality of life. Smite will now run on Linux. That's actually probably pretty cool for a lot of you guys. Um, bug fixes. Don't think we're going to need to worry about it. Should be mostly fine. They fixed Opwa. If you guys, if there's any Opwa players out here, his three was bugging out hard and basically just not doing the bonus effect. So that's that's kind of a big deal. That's very good that that's fixed. Let's get into the wild stuff. Soul surges. So, yeah, this is one that scares me. We'll see how it works. Soul surges. When a god dies, a soul surge will spawn at the point of their demise. Soul surges are circular areas of effect that grant movement speed to all gods in the area and a buff to damage dealt to gods with low health in the area. So that's scary. We'll see what the numbers are. While a soul surge is active, spirit minions will spawn from the center, attacking any nearby gods and providing XP and gold when they're slain. And any additional god deaths anywhere on the map cause the area to expand in size and extend in duration. After the time expires, there's a global surge cooldown for all players. So, 30 seconds of soul surge. Um, it gets... 10 wider. I don't know how wide it is to begin with. I feel like that's important. <laughs> it gets 10 wider. Okay, but how big is it anyways, high res? I don't know. I'm assuming it's at least like 55 units wide and it gets like 65, 75, something like that. Increased duration by 15 per other death. Camps at four deaths. So that means it can go up to a minute and a half soul surge. Um, I'm assuming the respawn time means no, no two minutes between soul surges, right? Yeah, it looks like it. So two minute potential window in between um 15 percent move speed when you kill somebody and you get that soul surge and you like come out of the soul surge or whatever 15 percent move speed do you get it coming out or is it only inside of it all gods in the area so it's kind of like a gilgamesh three it looks like um yeah and I'll, I'm, so right now patch notes literally just started i just happened to catch that they actually uploaded this by the way so for anything where details are important i'm going to try and go back and look later on and see if i can fill stuff in um but i also might not because today's today's an awkward day man i literally like Tomorrow's my last day before I move, and then and then Saturday I actually move, so I don't have a ton of time for stuff, but but maybe, maybe, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what I can do. Um, but yeah, 15% move speed inside the Soul Surge. While below half, all basic attacks and abilities to get enemy gods with will apply a burn that deals 2% current... Bro, mm, I don't, I don't know about this. 2% current HP every half second for 2 seconds. While below half, you will deal 8% current HP from a tick that you can proc on basics or abilities, and then 2% per little of those ticks, because it's like four ticks total to make it eight, right? Like, I'm assuming, unless they miswrote this, that's what they're saying, which is a crazy number. Now, that is current health, not total health, not true damage. Um, wait, actually, we don't know if it's true damage. <laughs> that, that might be true damage. <laughs> it doesn't say true damage. I'm going to assume it's not. That... So, like, I'm picturing Kali autos are just going to do 2% more. Kali gets kin size, kind of, right? I guess it's not that extreme. I don't know. I, I it's mm, that, that seems like a lot for a thing that they're just chucking in. 
it really does seem like a uh, a win harder effect, which normally isn't a good idea to just be adding as like a global thing. Dying inside the soul surge reduces your respawn timer by 50%. What? What? Oh, except conquest. Don't care. Don't care. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, high res is playing with my heart right there. Thank God. Does not apply for conquest. So for anybody confused, soul surges are in conquest. Okay, they're in every mode. Um the the fact that it doesn't give you lower respawns, very important for conquest. That would be dumb as hell. All right, let's see the, the minion thing. This is this is really scary right here. So let me see. Uh, this is a ranged, wait, Soul Surge Spirit. Ranged, neutral, aggressive minion that has a 15 second lifetime and can pass through players and player made walls. A new spirit will spawn every 10 seconds while a surge is active. Okay, this shouldn't be too OP. This had me concerned. I actually thought they were just going to chuck out a minion wave. I thought they were going to chuck out some spirit minion waves, um, which it does seem like it's a little bit capable of being, but this is going to be about half of a minion reward uh, around there to kill. And then also... Um, it's only spawning once every 10 seconds, it looks like, as a single minion. So, if it's spawning a minion wave, the amount of farm you get from benefiting from a soul surge would be absolutely absurd. This looks like it's okay. So, yeah, every 50, wait, how often do these spawn? I don't remember now. Uh, uh, wait, does it not, what? Does it say here? Oh, every 10 seconds, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's capable of giving you a ton of farm, right? Because remember the soul surge can get up to, I think it was a minute and a half if people keep dying and extending it. And one thing that I don't remember if it's said or not. Okay, it does say that. Yeah, anywhere on the map that an, that another gun dies, that expands the soul surge. I'm curious, does that include on your own team? Does that matter that much that getting the, initi the initial kill in a fight to create the soul surge, do you then benefit from your own teammates dying? Or does it have to be on the other team? Because I don't think it's saying that anywhere. I'm pretty sure. But, but yeah, this is this is gonna be a pretty big new mechanic, I think, that we'll have to uh, we'll have to dive into. So the actual minion worth the 30 XP, 12 gold, and then provides 265. Eight, wait, what? <laughs> I thought this was saying it stats. I'm assuming it means it buffs. What? Also provides 265 HP, 25 magical power, six power, two prop, 100 HP. I think they might have written this weird. This is written so weird. They're writing it like it buffs you. Why would it only buff mages? I'm assuming this is the stance of the minion and this is how it levels up those stats. I think so. I I could be, this seems so random if, <laughs> if you get this from killing the minion. So I'm assuming these are the minion stats and they're just like terribly written. Somebody, somebody had to rush a bit. That's what I'm gonna guess. Um, shut down nerfs, baby nerf. This doesn't matter that much. Helps a little bit. You get, a, you get a shutdown, you get a little less reward. That's good. Shutdowns are kind of OP right now. Don't think that's remotely going to fix the issue. There's way bigger issues than that when it comes to snowballing right now in Smite, where it's, where it's kind of pointless to snowball to some degree. Um, yeah, at least as a single person. Obviously, as a team, you're just kind of winning when you snowball. But as a single person, you don't get nearly the reward I feel like you should right now. Where, where when you die, you give them stupid farm. And when you get kills, you get less farm. And that's kind of rough. Ranked reset pretty, should be pretty normal. Yeah, pretty normal stuff. Um, assault changes, so <laughs> so they're rebalancing healers and assault because some of them just absolutely suck as healers. The ult heal will no longer be your your thing. You're just not going to be a healer. You can now play Cthulhu and assault and not troll your team. Not that you play them on purpose because it's assault. I know, I know. We've never done an assault video. Mass knows how assault works, mostly. I play it every once in a while. So new conquest map. This isn't going to be a crazy change to the map, I don't believe, in terms of the actual shape of the map and stuff like that. Like, obviously, we're getting soul surges. We're also going to be getting some other things that will be kind of spicy, um, like very spicy, honestly, from what they have revealed. But I don't think the shape of the map is going to change a ton. Um, yeah, it, it's not going to be like, oh, my God, new season, like, 11 map or anything like that, where it's, like, real different. It's going to mostly change themes. But then, like it says here, mid lane now noticeably wider, shifted closer to solo lane, and has all new pathing on the entrance to it from the Gold Fury side. Blue and red camp pathing has been adjusted for quicker rotations between the camp and the nearby lanes. What? Okay, blue buff I get. Red is the easiest buff to get to, man. Are you... <laughs> what, what more? Mid has it so easy. Mid laners, you have it so easy. Not only his aggro and... 
And who's the other? Clumsy gotten you a billion mage buffs this season because like half the devs are mid mains now. Um, <laughs> I don't I don't know if this is actually I, I think this is somewhat true, but I don't know if that's actually why the why mages are good now. But not only do you get the mage buffs, but they just spoon feed you red buff now. They spoon feed it to you. You play mid, you walk into your tower, you walk two feet to the right or the left, I guess, depends on uh, which side you're on. Boom, red buff. There you go. You do the red buff. It's that easy. Solo lane, we got to run all the way around the blue buff. It's kind of awkward. Dual lane, we got to run all the way around the purple buff. It's kind of awkward. Red buff is just right there. And it's still hard to invade somehow. They made it easier. How did they just put it in tower? Did they just put it in this little cave in the tower where it's not going to get shot? They might have, man. They might have. Anyways, this isn't a real rant. I don't know why I went with that. My bad. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, that should be that. I think, I think we're good here. This is just kind of them commenting on stuff. So Stygian Beacon at Capture Point. I'm kind of scared about this one um, because we are likely working into at least a temporary tank meta with the item changes that they've teased. I will say tanks look like they're going to be very good with this new capture point thing they're adding. I don't know if it'll matter enough to play those tanks um, specifically for it, but this is supposed to be like a king of the hill, be inside the beacon type of thing. Naturally, tanks that are harder to kill are going to be able to sit in it longer, more safely, and brawl up close, which means that that's more likely to make tank meta important if this is important. So let's try and see how important it is. New capture point style objective located just outside the mid lane. Stand in the area in greater numbers than your opponent to capture it. The Stygian Beacon will always activate exactly three times each match of Conquest. The team that successfully captures the Beacon will gain a permanent stanking buff that increases their damage dealt to towers, phoenixes, and titan, as well as team-wide gold and XP. The permanent buff grants 5% additional damage to structures and unleash titans and 1% additional movement speed per stank? You know what? I think it's okay. I don't know why. I don't know why they put it on. You can get three stacks. That is 3% movement speed. I think it's okay. 3% um, movement speed is pretty negligible. It's it's something. It will make a little bit of a difference for sure because movement speed is an insane set, but this should be fairly negligible. However, why? Why did they even feel the need, man? I feel like a lot of people are going to be like, can we not just give the winning team movement speed, please? Right? Can they not just get to run us down a little bit easier than they already could? Um, yeah. Four gold per minute of match time. Five XP per minute of match time. Gold and XP are awarded to all five players equally, regardless of their proximity to the capture point. Roughly 48 gold and 60 XP to all five players on the capturing team of the first Beeson. <laughs> Beacon. So I guess it spawns like, hmm, how long does it take to capture it? Because they're saying roughly. Does it spawn at like 11 minutes? Because like the, the 60 XP 48 gold is going to be at 12 minutes. I don't know. Maybe it just spawns at 12 and it captures fast. I, I don't know. They're not really. Oh, and they're going to say underneath my bed. I'll just keep reading. First capture point opens up at the 12 minute mark. Falling capture point will open up six minutes after the previous capture. So kind of around like big objective timings like fire giant gold fury stuff like that. Whoever has more players on the beacon will earn progress toward a capture. Having more players on the beacon will capture it faster. Each additional player contributes one fifth of the original capture speed. Oh, Okay, so it sounds like if just nobody's there and you just kind of step up, then <laughs> that thing is free as hell. That like if, if there's extra people fighting over it, then it captures a lot slower and it's more like, oh, we got in there, we got in there and we're kind of like slowly pushing back and forth like a tug of war where you're making small amounts of progress. And it seems like this is saying the first person has way more speed if you can just be the only person. If that happens somehow, if you just Odin ult the enemy team off and they're like, where's the phantom shell? And they can't get in. Boom. You just get the beacon. It looks like. I don't know. Um, after the beacon has been captured three times in the match, the Titans will unleash and the beacon will deactivate for the remainder of the match, which is another big thing that they're adding is these unleashed Titans. So after the third and final Stygian beacon, the Titans will break from the binds of Tartarus and become unleashed. The lane with the most, sorry, I got distracted. The lane with the most total structure health will be highlighted, and after a slight delay, the Titans will march down it. The Titans will meet in the middle of that lane and face off with their melee attacks as well as with two new abilities. Do they, please tell me the Titans keep these abilities in base. I have wanted Titan abilities basically since Smite came out. It has been lame how weak Titans are in base since they came out. Please tell me they keep these. I don't think they do. I think the Unleashed Titans are kind of Titans going giga mode, and then they go back to their little bitch selves after. 
I could be wrong. It would be cool if they get to keep the abilities. Maybe the abilities are too OP to keep. I don't know. But like having abilities when you seize the Titan so it doesn't just feel like a big minion would be cool, right? Um, so yeah, they have two new abilities they can use for that. Deplete the Unleashed Titan's health bar to repel it, teleport it back to base, and then continue to push with the surviving Titan. Unleashed Titans are symmetrical and use a separate health pool from their health they have while bound in base. Slay a Titan in the base before or after this encounter to end the match and win the game. While the Unleashed Titans are out, there will not be a Titan back at base to hit. So, the way this basically works, the idea with it is that it is forcing a team fight objective where it's potentially scary in order to, um... Just sit back in Phoenix Defend, because if you sit back in Phoenix Defend with the other team, assuming they play it smart, both these Titans are going to come out at the same time. They're going to meet in the dead center of whichever lane has that structure health difference. Um, and if you're sitting back at base defending or something where you're like losing the game, it's scary. You don't want to go push up and fight because you think you're going to lose the team fight. Then they're obviously going to dumpster your Titan. Your Titan should retain or their Titan should retain almost all its health. They'll be able to push with that Titan. Kind of hard to see right now or say right now how strong the Titans are going to be when they're unleashed. But that's probably another big thing where uh, it's, it's probably going to be like a super siege juggernaut for anybody that's played siege. I'm trying, is that a thing in, in Clash right now or Slash or whatever the hell exists now? I don't think it is, right? But if you guys have ever played siege, it's probably like a super siege juggernaut where it's actually going to be st pretty strong in a fight. Although it's going to get the AI chasm where it's probably not going to be the smartest in a fight. And I'm assuming it's also going to be very effective at actually like pushing into Phoenix and stuff like that. So... Then it's something where if you don't want to step up and team fight at that stage of the game, then that's going to make it for the team that's already winning, the team that currently has the pressure in that like more closer to mid game stage where it's not too deep into the late game. They're going to have a super strong push that they can try and just end game with is I think how it's going to work out. So so that's that's interesting. That's like a point to contest. And it's a very different point to contest. So it's going to be very spicy for smite players that have been playing a long time because we don't have something where it's go fight halfway up the lane while down 10k gold. That's normally just referred to as inting. But but now you might need to do it. Now it might just kind of be the play. We'll have to see. So it's a cool idea. We'll have to see how it actually plays out and if it sucks at all. Uh, the beacon I'm not a big fan of right now. It doesn't seem like it's super OP. The, that structure damage can absolutely add up a decent bit. It's not going to be like a game breaker. If you get all three beacons, that doesn't mean you auto in the game. Like right now, it's looking like I'm trying to think. So does it say exactly when the other beacons come up? Yeah, so 18 and 24. So if I can do math, which I can't, but I I, I will try. Um, somewhere around, I think, like 270 XP. And why can't I scale the gold in my head? Like 230 gold, something like that. 270 XP, 230 gold for, I think, securing literally every beacon when it opens. Right? I think so. So if you secure every single beacon when it opens, aside from the buffs you get, which the buffs are decent, um... You're, you're overall getting a gold fury from the three beacons. So it doesn't seem super OP. I was worried that it would be closer to gold fury level and that it'd be insane. But that's like, come on, like three of those is, is really around a gold fury. So, so that should be OK. The 5% structure damage boost getting up to 15% and then potential 3% move speed is going to be pretty strong for sieging. But it's not going to again, like it's not going to just be an absolute game breaking thing. It's just going to make it easier, which which should be fine. So this will actually I think this will be interesting to play around. See, see how that goes. All right, so we're moving on to Conquest Balance. There's going to be a lot of stuff. Let me take a drink real quick. So, uh, Order Titan has received an art update. Chaos Titan can go fuck itself. Fire Giant, increased respawn delay from four to five minutes. Fire Giant's might increase buff duration from three to four minutes. So, basically, old Fire Giant has returned. Not the actual, you know, not the model, but the way that it used to work. It lasted for four minutes, but had a five-second respawn. Or five five minute respawn. My God, that'd be some FG. Decrease magic power from eighty to eight, eighty five to seventy five. Decrease physical power from sixty to fifty five. Fire Giant's rage increased buff duration from three to four minutes. Increased bonus damage for structures. Modifier from thirty percent to forty percent. Fire Giant's rage is EFG, by the way, for anybody confused. Um, decrease magic power from one hundred ten to one hundred, and fizz power from seventy to sixty five. Okay. Titan, decrease health by a very small amount. We don't know why. We just felt like doing it. Decrease scaling health from structures from 750 to 650. Okay. Okay. Towers and Phoenix's Bastions increase damage. Ooh. So Bastions are sticking around, huh? I'm surprised. Okay. Which I don't I don't have a problem with. I just kind of figured they'd be a one one season thing, you know? Increased damage reduction buff to T1 towers from 15% to 25%. Decreased health from 1500 to 1200. 
I could have sworn these were 25%. Did they get nerfed and I just didn't catch it? I thought having both Bastions was 50%. I guess it's only 30%. I, they, they must have nerfed that, right? I swear it used to be this. So they're doing it. They're kind of putting it back, but they're making them easier to kill. That's cool. Yeah, I'll try and not read over some of the small changes. Phoenix has 3k health instead of 3400 health. That's a good change. Phoenix feeling a little too hard to siege right now. It's not like it's going to be super squishy or anything either right now. Pyromancer gives 15 more base gold. Oracles give 20% more XP, around 20% more gold. The uh, the gold buff over in the dual lane side gives an extra 15 XP. So that's going to be an extra 33% of the base XP. That's a pretty big difference. Almost double the gold. Scorpion's cooldown buff over in the solo lane gets another 15 XP and 10 gold, making these um these neutral harpies a lot more, or neutral camps a lot more valuable. Pushed up initial mid harpy spawn time from 130 to 1. This is a really good change. Right now, the, the jungle roll has this very cringe waiting game where you don't have a lot of good options a lot of the time. Um, if you want to go solo side super early on around that one minute mark, it is get gank or lose farm. That Those are your two options. You, you can go solo. You can gank. If the gank goes well, it's worth. If it doesn't, you are absolutely wasting your time. And that's not just because you're ganking. It's because there's literally no farm on that side of the map. You have nothing to go do. You only go solo for that gank, which kind of sucks. If you go duo lane, it's such an obvious gank that normally good players are just going to be ready for it. They're like, oh, we're at that stage. We're at that, that third wave or whatever where the jungle should be here around now because that just tends to be what you do because there's no mid camps yet. What else am I going to do with myself? And so duo lane, you get a similar thing where it's kind of like go duo, look for gank. And so you kind of have this option where the duo lane's a little bit less risky of a gank in terms of your own farm. The solo, solo lane gank is riskier in terms of your own farm, but the solo gank's easier to make work. And there's just nothing else to do. You, you just pretty much need to gank somewhere for the jungler. Like, unless you're just going to actually just sit mid doing nothing and splitting farms so you can get yourself a little, a little bit extra, even though it does sap from your mid laner. So changing this makes it so you don't have to gank. And if you do want to go gank, you are going to be giving up mid harpy control and losing out on farm. But that also makes ganks more effective because people are going to be less focused on just jungle should be here because jungle shouldn't necessarily be there. So this should be a really good change. Um, it should be coming in at a time of the game that absolutely makes sense for it as well. And they're also buffing XP and gold for the mid harpies a little bit. Worth keeping in mind, these are still early game mid harpies and it's not saying anything about making them less healthy. So these are going to be a two man objective for most junglers. Most junglers are going to have a really hard time soloing these. So it's going to be a mid jungle fight over those mid harpies, which should be pretty fun, honestly. Um, that, that should be something to keep the, the mid lane more interesting. All right. Damage camp. Very baby nerf to money. OK. Yep. Baby nerf to money on the speed camp and on the purple camp. Cyclops chest uh, decreased gold deficit gained per chest from 1.6% to 1%. So basically the chest that small or the chest that spawn over at small camps when you're behind, you're getting less of a reward. Let's get to the spicy stuff. Ooh. All right. So we have new glyphs for relic dagger. Yeah, for relic dagger. I love to cook with relic dagger. Bewitch dagger. Your relics receive 40 second. <gasps> This is literally just Relic Dagger cooldown. Um, <laughs> all enemy gods have 25% reduced to tank speed in a 55 unit radius around you. Yeah, yeah, big surprise. Which blade is back on, on Bewitched Dagger? Um, interesting, yeah. I think it's Witch Blades. There are a lot of auras in Smite. When you do these debuff auras, it's very easy for them to be cringe. Maybe hunters feel like this is cringe anyways. I have always felt with Witchblade that it's like the least cringe one because while you are reducing a tank speed around you, I'm trying to think, how do I explain this, man? Um, nor normally with an aura, you just have to be with your team. With Witchblade, you have to be in their team. It's kind of different where it's this punishing debuff, but it's not inherently killing them. It's not like a thorns type of thing. You're just reducing stuff. It ends up being kind of interesting. I don't know. Like the way that you apply it actually ends up being kind of interesting um, it is fairly strong, but always which blade has been, well, not always, but for a long time now, which blade has been an item where the stats aren't very good. The main focus is the debuff and you try and play around that debuff. So I think it's cool to see it back. Um, especially cause Midgard sucks right now. Midgard is please hit me, please hit me. So you punish yourself. And then normally you're playing it on support and normally ADC should not be hitting the support. And so it's like Midgard sucks is, is basically what it comes down to. So which blade's a way to effectively apply that by just running it face. And then you're still going to have potato stance so you can still die. Um, Eldritch Dagger. 
When you activate a relic, your protections are increased by 15% and you gain the ability to see wards for 10 seconds. Whoa. Okay. That's, uh, supports are going to like this. That's actually, wow. So I'm immediately picturing Bracer being nasty for this, where you can pop Bracer, already be getting yourself a ward from the Bracer, like around Fire Giant, Gold Fury, something like that. Have this upgrade, go run around and spot their vision around the objective. I could see this being pretty big in SPL. And then the prot increase is actually significant. Um, I don't know how much it would matter. Normally, this would be more of a setting up for a fight type thing, assuming that they're focused on this part, the ability to see wards. Uh, that's that's interesting. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, and honestly, like at the very least, whether or not you're trying to use the ability to see wards, this mid team fight is also strong. So I feel like it's kind of got two options. Normally, you're going to be using one or the other for the most part. Rune Forged now has glyphs. We'll have to see. I'm assuming Rune Forged like Basically, every item in Smite, by the way, is going to be getting stat changes. So I'm assuming Runeforge might be worth building without the glyphs, and then you'll also build into the glyphs after this patch. We'll have to see. So Flameforge Hammer, th these look sick. These look so fucking cool, by the way. Um, so this is just Runeforge passive. Your next successful hard CC on enemy god creates a runic symbol on the ground that lasts for five seconds. Enemies take 10% more damage. Only occurs once every 15 seconds. Runeforge is a garbage item. There's a reason you see, like, nobody build it unless they're basically memeing. Unless they're just trying to cook. So, Glyph. Additionally, enemy gods within the rune are burned, dealing 5 plus 10% of your prots from items and ability damage as magic damage. Oh, hi, Rez. Every, <laughs> every one second. Make it fizz damage, man. Every one second while inside the rune and for three seconds after leaving it. Okay, so I think what this ends up being, based on the way it's written, is 5 plus 10% per second for probably like four seconds which means it'll overall end up being 20 plus 40%. And this is proccing potentially every 15 seconds. And 40% proc from items is glad shield, but this is doing it as magical damage. And glad shield subsequ sub sub subsequent How do Why can't I th subsequent subsequent Why can't I think of that right now? This is like a normal word. Why can't I think of how it's pronounced? It doesn't matter that much. You guys know what I mean. Um nerf themselves by half. This doesn't so I'm just trying to picture, like, this is kind of just a glad shield proc, but magic damage. I don't think that matters that much. <laughs> like, it's, it's funny. In a way, this seems really good. You'd think it would be. I don't think it matters that much. I guess, okay, so I guess one, no, nah, I don't think it matters that much. For single target gods, this might be better. This might stand out more. Because mid-team fight, or just in a fight where there's multiple people around... You can hard CC a god, create the symbol in the area, and then all gods in the area are taking that burn, which is going to end up being somewhat similar to a magical glad shield proc over time, doing ticking damage. So maybe that is good? I actually, I don't think this is crazy. Obviously, it's a buff. Don't get, obviously, it is a buff. It makes it more, there's more incentive to build this. I don't think it's going to be anything insane, though. I don't think this is going to be a big number like you might expect it to be. Rune Breaking Hammer. Your next successful hard CC on an enemy god creates a 30 unit shockwave around them. I thought this was going to be a knockup. It looks like it's not. Enemies hit by the shockwave deal 10% less damage and take 10% more damage for three seconds. This I could normally see being probably overall better and, and way more helpful in most team fights is that this might be capable of doing a decent bit. Hmm. Actually, is this good? <laughs> is Glad Shield just busted and I'm sleeping on it? Because I'm picturing late game, man. If you can build this with a, let's say, 600 total prop build. But I guess that's only going to be from items. So let's say 400 prop from items. Okay. Let's say 400 total prop. And you're doing 40% of that plus 20. So then you're going to end up doing, what, 160, I think, is the math. Plus 20, so 180. 180 magic damage over four seconds-ish. It could be a little bit more than that, depending on how long they're in the, the circle. Yeah, eh? Yeah, it really, it really is. It's going to be magical glad shield, but with ticking damage. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's that good. This this one I'm seeing be, probably be a little more exciting. Um, I could see this one being better. I still don't think either of these are like crazy glyphs. And that's fine. They don't need to be crazy glyphs. But like they're not like, oh shit, build this glyph. They're nothing like that. All right, Pridwin glyphs are getting added. So glorious Pridwin. When you, wait, are they finally just saying the glyph buffs? They're just ignoring the, the actual original Pridwin? All right. 
When your ultimate ability is finished casting, you create an explosion, dealing 75% of your prots from items and abilities as magical damage, and slowing targets by 25% for 3 seconds in a 30 unit radius. Then you gain a shield equal to 90% of your prots from items and abilities for 5 seconds. Okay. When destroyed by timing out or being depleted, you explode again. So what I'm hearing is you do the explosion from Pridwin thing that you would get. I'm trying to think when the when the shield would die, right? Pridwin's been so out of the meta lately, I'm actually forgetting a little bit. But I think the way Pridwin used to work is you used to basically get, I'm pretty sure, like 75% of your prop from items as a shield, I think was actually the number, right? Um, and then when that shield broke, it would do, in a very small area around you, it would do explosion damage, right? Uh, or was it just if it if it didn't break, then it would expire and do whatever was left? I, maybe it was that. But this is just straight up, boom, explosion damage, infused sigil, but not a starter upgrade, and we can put them both together and we can do some nuking. How about that? So you do that, you slow them with it, within a 30 unit radius, which is a decent bit, then you gain the shield, which lasts 5 seconds and is 90% of your prots, which is a pretty big shield normally, from items and abilities. So a lot of the time this is going to be similar to that, that what we just looked at is probably going to be around 400 for a true tank. Um, when destroyed... It will explode again, or by timing out, it'll explode again. So we're probably doing, if we're getting around that 400 here, it's going to be 90%, so it'd be like 360. Then we're doing 300 here. So that's potential 300 magic damage late game plus slow. And then we do that shit again when the other shield wears off or breaks. So that alone is capable of doing quite a bit. Um, it's magic damage. It's not true damage or anything. That is capable of doing quite a bit. I think if you double proc these, if you hit both shields, this will actually be basically infused sigil damage. And you can stack them together and it could be fun. I don't think it's going to be a game breaker. I think it could actually be fairly strong. This looks like the strongest glyph so far to me. Um, Reverent Pridwin. When your ultimate ability is finished casting, you gain a shield equal to 200% of your prots from items and abilities. <laughs> Oh my god, this one's better, man. This one's stupid. When destroyed by timing out or being depleted, it explodes in a 30-unit radius and deals magic damage equal to 75% of your prop from items and abilities and slows targets by 25% for 3 seconds. Is it better? Okay, you know what? In all fairness, I, I think this is overall just better. Um, but in all fairness, because of the way this one procs, if I could call an ult somebody or some sort of ult that's going to be pretty reliable to just like, if I'm hitting this the way I want to, I'm already going to be by them and get the instant explosion from the way this works now. Then this could be like that free, what was it? 300 magic damage, which is then going to get nerfed. And then assuming they're not tanky and they're just as squishy, it's probably going to do something like 180. Um, so that's a free, pretty decent extra chunk. Like that's, that's a pretty big chunk that you're adding to your ultimate ability and you're just kind of like automatically hitting depending on the gods. So sometimes that might be really strong. 200% prot shield. Again, if we're doing that 400 number where we have 400 prots from items and abilities, this is 800 shield. Now there are items in spite right now, unless they're getting removed that are shield reduction that they've added. And I think it's dumb that they've added, but it's going to help a lot for Pridwin. It's probably why they want to tune this up so that Pridwin is incentivizing you to buy those. Um, that's crazy though, man. And then it can still explode after for that that damage. You just don't get the initial explosion. That is probably going to be a very strong solo item. What I am a little bit worried about, I'm trying to picture solo laners right now. Maybe it doesn't matter. You know what? Maybe it doesn't matter that much. I think a lot of warriors actually have ults that are good for this. Um, when you get these procs like this, when your ultimate ability is finished casting, you get items like this that sometimes de-incentivize playing certain gods. There are certain gods that are not going to be effective at using that Pridwin shield when their ult finishes, because their ult might be weird. Let's give, like, Set as an example. Not that Set's a solo laner, or somebody that you tend to build Pridwin on, but let's just use him as an example. If you Set ult, you have to wait till the end of Set ult, so 12 seconds, for this to proc. That sucks, right? Like, that's absolute garbage. Um... So you get stuff like that. That's that's an extreme. But you get stuff like that where the ultimate does not at all make sense with Pridwin. That god is not going to be a Pridwin god. If this is a, a meta where Pridwin really stands out in the solo lane and on support, then that god is kind of just out of it, right? So that's something worth keeping in mind. I don't know if there's a great way to get around it. The best way would be making it something that you can kind of pop at certain times or you're having a key to press for it. But Smite's not meant to be a crazy mechanical, super like extreme game like that. I think League has stuff like that because League gets more mechanical. Um... 
they probably don't want to do that, but just saying that's something that's potentially nicer to keep it more consistent. But yeah, strong. Pridwin glyphs looking real strong, man. Pridwin looks nutty. Uh, worth keeping in mind, Pridwin should be more of a mid-game item. Pridwin's pretty painful to build early game. Oh my, no, my baby. No. <laughs> Why? I'm going to cry, man. I'm going to cry. Oh my goodness. Let's go up here. All right. All tier three items will receive the following changes. Decrease Fizz Power and Magic Power based stats from items by 30%. Decrease Health, Fizz Prot, and Magic Prot based stats from items by 15%, rounded in increments of 5. Decrease Item Passes that provide Power, Health, or Prot by a similar amount as the item's base stats. Only unchanged items are Odysseus Bow and Toxic Blade. Oboe is actually, like, kind of viable at the moment, so this might sound troll. However, Oboe specifically scales off of your basic attack power, which specifically is going to mostly scale from items, which are getting nerfed. So this should be fine. Um, and Oboe's base stats suck, so, like, that's also fine. Uh, Toxic Blade sucks, so we don't care. Change the feel of the power curve, especially in the mid to late game for gods. Make power and proc cap harder to reach and more meaningful to reach. Decrease bursting as a DPS versus DPS combat. Empower tanks and tanky builds by nerfing HP and procs less than power. So these are all the goals right here. Erendite. Rip. <laughs> I don't think it's actually going to be a rip. I think it looks right now a lot worse. Well, hmm. Like, it's probably not actually a rip, but it is, there are going to be items, I actually talked about this, um, I, I think I hinted at this in, like, a tweet or something for the Zusano video or something like that, um, scaling items like Crusher, Heartseeker, and Erendite, if they don't get changes to their passives, they are overall going to feel an extra nerf, and that goes for other items as well, they are going to feel an extra nerf, like, Erendite right now is a 50% scaling proc after using your ultimate ability with, like, 20 flat damage added on, if we're nerfing power by 30%, then that originally 50% proc is going to effectively be now, like, 35% proc. But also, its power is getting nerfed, too. Um, which is potentially fine. Like, that might just be the way to go. It's worth keeping in mind that's something that can hit these items pretty hard. Is there some of these items where, early on in the game, when you don't have a lot of power, it doesn't stand out as much. It's when you get those crazy scaling numbers, especially when you get that protector of the jungle in there maybe a red buff in there and you're getting that like those percentage boosts that gave you a stupid amount of power that's what makes them insane and those stupid amounts of power are going to be way harder to hit with these changes that they're making which should be a good thing but it's worth keeping in mind it is going to hit some some items harder than others if that makes sense so yeah Aaron Dyke, rip <laughs> um but no it, it should realistically be fine with the changes uh Aussie losing 15 power a lot of these are just going to kind of skim through because it's not going to matter a ton um 10 power on Abo, 30 power on Bancrofts, 30 power on Bancrofts passive, so it's going from 200 potential total to 140, 30 on Bancrofts. Can we just skip, like, all these? Let's let's just skim a little bit. I won't even say a lot of these. 10, 50, 10, 25 on Bloodforge. Yeah, like, they really are. They basically are just straight up doing 30%, so I think we'll just slowly skim through. If anything stands out, then I'll bring it up. And right now we're getting to prot items, so we can see only 10 prot getting taken away on Breastplate, um, which obviously seems a lot less like, let's, Erendite, cooldown item, hang on, Erendite, cooldown item, it now has 50 power instead of 75 power, if we want to get back to that 75 power, we would need a 50% buff to our power, that's a big nerve, right, this is only losing 10, this is losing about 20%, um, that's, that's a really big shift right there, so it's standing out a lot on certain items, this is what I'm talking about, which I'm personally okay with, but some people are not going to be okay with, and it's probably going to get a little extreme for a little bit, is I really do think these are going to be hard enough changes that it is going to actually feel like tank meta for a bit, that warriors are going to feel really strong for a bit. But we'll have to see for sure what actually happens. Um, but yeah, only nerfing by 10, nerfing regrowth by 10, which stands out more since regrowth is 55 instead of 65. Decrease move speed from 30% to 20% on the passive. If anybody's confused and is like, this has 30% move speed, it's only on the passive, calm down. Um, it looks like they're keeping regrowth passive completely intact in terms of power, by the way. So that power is relatively stronger now on regrowth passive, which is kind of interesting. Um, entire 10 power off CAD, ouch. CAD got farmed and it loses health. Damn, CAD got, CAD got kind of dumpstered. It still does the aura thing, which is really the main reason you build it. Or not the, I guess it is an aura thing, but the healing buff thing. Uh, Curious gets a little bit nerfed. Who cares? Ooh, ooh, 90 to 65 on Chiron's coin. Um, 
So I want I want to bring up something too. Actually, while while we're here and we're looking at these, um, I think some of these stat nerfs, only some of them. I think some of these stat nerfs are are definitely going to go too hard. I think there is a good chance if it feels like they go too hard that Hyres will do a good job at doing another global buff that's much smaller. I could be wrong, or maybe not even global, but just kind of going through and looking at them a bit. Because this is, unless I am misremembering, when Chiron's Coin came out and it was just a solid pen item and it didn't feel like it's anything nutty that I was like, oh my god, mages get Chiron's Coin, uh, which it doesn't feel that nutty right now, but it's like it's a good item right now, it's a good pen item. I think it had 80 power. Right now it has 90 power. I don't think Chiron's Coin is one of those mage items that feels like it's overtuned. It's just a mage item that's there and pen is important, so a lot of the time you're building it. Taking it down to 65 is a, a big hit. And don't get me wrong, prots are getting nerfed too. So it's less of a big hit when you actually consider who you're using it against and stuff. But this this might be a, a little much, and they might have to undo some of the stuff like this. Chronos Pennant going down to 70, on the other hand, I think is mostly fine. Chronos Pennant's a fairly cooldown-focused item. Um, you're still getting that cooldown benefit, so while you do take a big hit to the power, a lot of its purpose is still intact. God, I have to sneeze so bad. I have to, oh my god. Like, for the last 10 minutes, man, it's actually killing me. At some point, it's just going to explode. I'm just going to explode. Oh my god. All right. Another contagion or another defense nerf, not a big deal. Um Deathbringer, this one <laughs> this one this one looks a little weird. Deathbringer is going to have 30 power. It is worth keeping in mind. This is not as big of a nerf as some of the other nerfs are. Deathbringer still has 30% crit and its entire passive intact. So, realistically, it's still good. But it is going to be a big nerf. And it's also important to keep in mind that crit is effectively getting nerfed unless they do something to accommodate it. Because crit is about scaling up your auto damage. And the way that you scale up that auto damage is through stats. Uh, other than just hitting level 20, which doesn't do a ton, it does some. It's it's mostly through item stats. All those item stats are getting nerfed. Crit is effectively getting nerfed extra because you're nerfing that scaling. um, Or you're nerfing that base that crit scales off of. So... Yeah, worth keeping in mind. Not just on stat, not just on items like Deathbringer, but like if you're building a crit build and Devos goes down in 20 power, that crit build gets hit real hard. Whereas if you're building a Kin's Pen build and Devos goes down in 20 power, that's a lot less of an impact, if that makes sense. Right now, we're not even in a crit meta anymore. Spectral is strong, crit has been nerfed, Kin's is OP. Pretty much, pretty much sums it up. So unless they do something to affect Kin Size, Kin Size is going to just be the strongest item in Smite, I think, honestly. Um... It doesn't mean you'll build it on everybody, but it's going to be the item that make hunters a class, pretty much, in terms of anything competitive. So we'll skim a little bit. Ooh, Demon Blade not getting nerfed that hard. That's kind of an interesting change. Um, hmm. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> it's, it's it's kind of interesting. I don't know if I like it. It's kind of weird that Demon Blade is going to have similar stance to Deathbringer. Like, passives aside. I, I don't know about that. Demonic Grip, not eating a huge nerf. Devo Gloves eating a big passive nerf, not a big base power nerf, which is actually kind of interesting, I think. So that's keeping this item feeling a little better to build right away. Um, but you are overall eating a pretty normal nerf, and um, this is in line with everything they've been doing so far. Keep in mind, too, so this is, yeah, this, this makes sense right now. So Blood Forge, I believe, got nerfed to 50 just like Erendite. So Devo Gloves is going to have Blood Forge power once it's stacked, 30 power before it's stacked. So you're seeing a 20 power drop off which is nowhere near as crazy as the, I think, 40 power drop-off that you have right now before the patch goes through. And then as you stack up, you'll you'll make that up. So that's kind of an interesting change. And then keep in mind, this still has 15 flat pen on it. I am surprised they did not tone that down to 10. That's, uh, that's a lot of flat pen to be keeping on it. So Divine Ruin, 30, Dom, yeah. Do more beats a big nerf, 40 power, ouch. Imp Armor, 10 prots, a little bit of health. Nerving the passive on Emp Armor by quite a bit, wow. They really don't want you to be structure cheesing too hard, huh? They want to make sure people can siege. That's interesting. Uh, erosion eating a normal nerf. Fae Blast Hoops, nobody buys that. Fail not getting a baby. Fail not looking good. Oh my god, Fail not is looking good. Got a baby nerf. A little bit of a Thebes nerf. No nerf to the aura. Yep, looking good, looking good. Ouch. Ooh, Golden Blade eats 10. It is interesting how some of these nerfs stand out a lot more than others. For, like, literally, great example, Hasten, Katana, Golden Blade, both in the same trees. Five power nerf, ten power nerf. That's a big difference right there. That is twice as strong of a nerf. Um, 
keep in mind this item sucks so it's fair <laughs> but but it's just it's interesting how that changes griffin wing no no it's still fine it's it's still it should be i mean okay well it's fine in that like it wasn't meta before but you could build it that should mostly still ch stay true um this might be a little extra of a nerf though i don't know like compared to other items not that it's not that it's like unnecessary or whatever a little bit of a nerf actually did nerf the aura a little bit on heartward Okay. Hydra's going down from 40 to 30. No nerf to its passive. That's good because Hydra's passive already got dumpster recently. Jotun's only eating a five power nerf. I like this. Jotun should make sure that it's strong early game. Um, 30 power hit to last gasp. It's fine. Lotus Sickle gets a baby nerf. Magi's gets a baby nerf. A lot of baby nerfs right here. Yeah, all these seem pretty fine. Obsidian Shard in line with Chiron's Coin going down to 65 power. That is, uh, that is pretty little. So I think if I can keep in mind, I'm going to talk about something with mages in a little bit here. I think mages are about to get the shaft. Polly eating a nerf to 65 as well. Polly, another one of those items where you scale up power really hard and it gets good. If you can't scale that power up hard enough, it's not good. So these nerfs are going to really hit Polly. Not that Polly is meta to begin with, but it's worth keeping in mind. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. That's a big change. Okay. So prophetic. Uh, Pridwin eats a baby nerf, by the way. 25 of both prods. Um, change explosion damage to scale off of total prods from items instead of the initial shield health. Uh... Okay, so, okay, so this will explode off of your actual prots. Erosion will not affect the shield explosion, is I think what they're getting at here. Any sort of shield nerfing item is not going to impact how much damage you're doing with that explosion. Um, <clears throat> Prophetic eats a half nerf to prots from stacks. This is a really good change. With the way this should work, if you are not somebody that is particularly good at stacking Prophetic, you probably just don't want to buy it now. Um which is good. Prophetic could give some crazy prot aura. That's getting toned down significantly. It also looks like, unless they're just not entirely writing it out, that you actually get a little boost when you evolve Prophetic, because the way this should math now is it should be 15 um, prots from all stacks combined, where it's like you're getting up to 15 from Fizz and then up to 15 from Magic, and then that's going to evolve to 20, as it looks like what it's saying here. Whereas before, it would just give you the 30, right? Um, <clears throat> let's see... Pythag's just potato power, less health, less passive. Damn, Pythag's actually, eh. I was going to say getting hit kind of hard. It kind of makes sense. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, Kinsai is getting a hit. Kinsai is now an anti-tank item. That should be a really good change. This should be a ridiculously good change. The big problem with Kinsai is, and they might still need to touch it up a little bit, the big problem with Kinsai is, is that you can do damage to squishies just fine, and you can absolutely dumpster tanks. This now turns this into, you can dumpster tanks. You will you will miss out on damage to squishies, but you can dumpster tanks. This is such a big nerf. Not only are they nerfing pretty much the damage for squishies by half, which is a lot, um, they're making a higher threshold, so it's harder to even scale into people that are remotely tanky. So it'll still, it should do just as much to the actual tanks, at least in the late game, because I think that the cap threshold is like 2750, basically every tank, I think, like any any truly tanky warrior, any truly tanky support at all should be hitting that 2750, as far as I can think. Um, but versus somebody a little squishier, somebody that maybe has a Warlocks, somebody that maybe has some sort of health item just in their build, um, like a single thing, then that's still going to take a little longer to scale into the the big scaling. It's interesting to consider, I think right now, if I remember right, the cap for Kins is 6%. Within this 500 health here, from 2250 to 2750, you're going to go from 1.5% to 6%. That's going to be a crazy shift. What's funny, um, I don't think, hypothetically, you could maybe hypothetically meta build, depending on the character you're playing, if you want to be tanky, intentionally avoid HP in order to dumpster Kins size passive. That's actually maybe a strat with the way they're scaling this now, because this is such a big shift. That's kind of dumb, but I'm actually kind of I'm kind of interested, man. I might have to cook a bit. I might have to I might have to cook up some anti kin size builds 
where it's like only building prot, no HP items, only mantle type items like mantle, spirit robe, stuff like that, where you're not getting any HP. All right, rage only to five power nerf, increase stacks from four to five, decrease crit chance from stacks by half a percent, decrease power per stack by two. But you do get more stacks. So overall, this is going to be same amount of crit. Um, overall, this is going to be less power. You're going to get 15 instead of 20 from the stacks. You're missing out on five here. So rage could before be 55. It's now going to be up to 45 power uh, from fully scaling it. And it's going to be a little bit harder to scale it up, which I guess it also just says right here, <laughs> which I guess it also just says rejuvenating heart. Uh, don't really care, but it's eating a bit of a nerf, not an item that people really build. Um, Relic dagger eats a baby nerf. So Relic Dagger is still feeling pretty good. This nerf shouldn't really matter too much in, in line with everything that's happening. Oh, why did you have to do it like this? Asclepius gets farmed. Oh my god, they could have left it at 70 or something. I mean, honestly, this, this change makes sense. You don't want Asclepius to be a big damage item, but just ouch. Rod eats a pretty big nerf. Eats a nerf to the scaling as well on passive. Runeforge only 25 power. Let's see. Serrated only 25 power. Silver Branch decreased max stacks from 100 to 20. Huh. Okay. Silver Branch less cheesable now. That's kind of, that's an interesting change. I don't remember exactly how these stacks scale. I don't remember if this is 20 power or 40 power. I'm assuming it's one of those that you can get up to a Silver Branch. Um, yeah. Huh. Soul Eater not eating too big of a nerf. Soul Eater actually looking pretty good through all this. Oh, ooh, that's gonna, hmm. That's going to hurt. They they kept this in line with Kin Size. What they didn't consider is that Kin Size is way better than Soul Reaver. It's not even close. Soul Reaver is a solid item. Kin Size is a god tier item um, for, for those two classes, respectively. So basically hitting it with the same nerf, that's mages are going to have a pretty tough time, I think, when it comes to getting any sort of pen build online right now in this upcoming patch. I was already going to bring up towards the end that I think mages are getting farmed way harder than any other class right now, um, which sort of makes sense, but I think is kind of unfair. This is, uh, yeah, Mage is, Mage is getting absolutely farmed right now. The The issue I have with it, um, which might end up being okay, is that Mages right now destroy Squishies. If you are a good Mage player, you will destroy Squishies. Um, it'll vary game to game because mages are, are a class that really desperately needs support from their team a lot of the time. You need you need decent team play. There are games where it's like, my team's doing nothing. I'm a mage. I get run down and die every fight. It just is what it is. Like, that's just life in, in some of those games, uh, which is less true for other classes. But I think they're going to have such a hard time killing tanks and then not feeling anywhere near as good versus the squishies so that now they're probably going to be playable for squishies, but nothing special. To me, this is really looking like we have hit mage items too hard. Assassin Hunter meta coming back from, from what I'm seeing right now. It really, like, unless I'm just delusional and I'm I'm tripping, I really feel like these mage item hits are hitting way harder than the other classes. And I'm not, I don't care about mages, man. I'm, I'm trying to stick up for other people. This seems a little extreme. I do think mages are very good right now. And their one issue is they can't necessarily deal with tanks that well. Um... They're keeping percent pen in line, but that did recently get nerfed. Soul Reaver eating a big hit, and then power eating such a big hit on a class that desperately needs power to scale up into late game. That's kind of just their thing, right? Um, yeah, I, I think that might go too far. We'll have to see. But yeah, Soul Reaver, Soul Reaver getting the kin size treatment. It's going to be way weaker against squishies and still similarly good versus most tanks. Uh, aside from the power nerf going with it. Again, pretty big nerf to mage items. Spectral getting less power from its passive because that could maybe get a little wild with the power nerfs that have been going through. Bobble eats a baby nerf and gets a price reduction? Is it Bobble meta? It's not Bobble meta. Chill. Probably. I don't think it is. <laughs> I would be, I'd be very surprised. Mirrodin eats a big nerf. Spirit Robe eats a baby nerf. Yeah, there's such a crazy... God, it's crazy to see the numbers be... Look at this, man. 40 to 35, 105 to 75. Such a big difference, which they, I mean, they said early on that like, that's what they're doing, but that's just, that's such a crazy difference. Small nerf to binding, uh, one to 0.8 times your level. Okay. It's a little weird. I don't even know if that's necessary. Okay. Crusher eats a decent nerf. XE eats a decent nerf. 
Maxi Pants is still staying the same, though. Oh, no, 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 my... Oh, no. Are you kidding me? Trans. Oh, my God. So before, this could get you... With, with trans finished, this could get you around, like, 95 power. Um, this would be around 60. So now this should be around 40. This is only 25. This is going to get you around 65 power. Is it in line with the changes? Yeah. Does it hurt trans a lot? Yeah. It's going to hurt trans a lot. Um, before you were looking at, for example, let, let's do a little example right here. When you evolve transcendence, you get like 95 power in a lot of situations, around 95 power. You get the 10% cooldown. You get practically infinite mana. It costs a little bit more than Jotun's. If you go Jotun's, you would get 40 power, a little bit of flat pen. So it does hit a little bit harder with that flat pen, but you're missing on a giant chunk of power, so that doesn't remotely matter. And then you're getting 20% cooldown and it's cheaper. It's like 2200 gold versus the 2500 gold right now that trans is. With this change, Jotun's, if you guys remember earlier in the patch notes, getting down to 35 power instead of 40, um, which is a very small nerf and keeps it feeling good. Like like Jotun's was before maybe not feeling very good, and now, now it should be feeling pretty good with all the changes that are going through that are nerfing power on other items. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like Crusher and Titan's Bane both have Jotun's power now, right? Yeah. Yeah, Crusher and Titan's Bane are, are just... Same power as Jotun's, which before they had more. So that stands out a lot. So now it's 35 to Transcendence, 65 potential power, which is way, way less of a drop-off. You're getting a 30 power difference instead of like a 55 power difference between those items. And then Jotun's is giving you the same amount of flat pen and cooldown, and it's immediate. You don't have to stack it. Jotun's is looking real good. at Trans is feeling a decent bit worse with the way it's coming through. We're definitely going to be going back to a, a lot of Jotun's building on Assassins. Typhon Deke's a big nerf. Amplifier gets nerfed a bit. Warlocks eats a big nerf. Warlocks eats a big nerf because they're also nerfing the scaling from passive. Ouch. Yeah, 155 to 110. Does keep most of its HP though. <clears throat> HP though. Um, Sentinels, baby nerf. God, there's so many items, man. So many items in this, in this game. Keep skipping, keep skipping. Anything special? Nope, nope. Nope. Oh, oh, nope, <laughs> nothing, nothing too important. Pretty big hit to Death's Embrace. Um, this hit matters way less to Death's Temper because it's keeping its passive and its attack speed. So it's something to keep in mind, by the way. So power is getting a big hit. Attack speed is not getting a big hit. I can only remember off the top of my head one attack speed change, which was Demon Blade got attack speed nerfed only. And not only was that just one attack speed change, but that nerf was overall a just really small nerf compared to most other items because they took off 5% attack speed instead of like 10 or 15 power. So right now, hunters are going to hit plenty fast. They will hit weaker. It, it's something to keep in mind that in a way, hunters are retaining more stats because a lot of their items are going to be items that are 40 power, 20% attack speed, passive. Something around that, right? That's how XE works. That's how um, that's how kin size works. That's how Demon Blade works. So you're getting some sort of stat stick like that. That's how boom how Boomerang works. Sorry, my voice is dying. Um, <clears throat> so, so you get a lot of items like that. When you're hitting the power, it doesn't reflect the entire hit to the item. When you hit something like Erudite, that is mostly a power stat stick, or Bloodforge, that is mostly a power stat stick, that is the thing other than the passive, is you're getting boom, big chunk of power. You cut that by 30%, that's a big nerf. But when you cut it by 30% on an item that does a bunch of other things, like give Kin's passive and have a tank speed, then it's way less of a nerf. So hunters should be actually looking pretty good through this update, while they're already pretty good, um, they should be able to tank shred very successfully still, because kin size passive versus tanks is intact, it's just not as good versus squishies, XE passive is completely intact, um, Titan's Bane is intact, Dom is intact, although Dom was bugged, I'm assuming they fixed the Dom bug, where apparently Dom was giving the stats it used to have before the, pro the, the pen change, so it had 20% pen instead of 16%, that should get fixed, um, yeah, just, just something to keep in mind, <clears throat> Anyways, um, moving on to Seer. Eats a big nerf to power, not as much to prot. Same for Protector. They changed the percent prot, but not the percent power on Protector. Wow. 15% power buff still intact. I'm actually, I'm pretty surprised about that. Do we skip past Bumba's? Is Bumba's up here? Bumba's passive intact too? Huh. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised to see that. Sm ooh, ooh. This is spicy. Small nerf to Diamond Arrow. 
which it looks like not true. We already looked at Death's Temper, Death's, uh, Death's Embrace. Those nerves were bigger. Small nerf to Diamond Arrow, small nerf to Ornate Arrow, bigger nerf to Hunter's Cowl, bigger nerf to Leader's Cowl. That's interesting. So they're, they're bringing the arrows a little bit more into the meta in the late game. Not sure if it'll be enough to actually bring them in, but they're going to bring them in more. Blood Soaked Shroud eats a big nerf to power. So does Sacrificial, little prot nerfs. Um, Sigil giving less power, giving less prot, but not a ton less prot. Yeah, still pretty tanky item. By the way, <laughs> with all these damage changes, I, I might have to bring something up. So this Infused is not remotely a good item. Um, you can build it, but it's very rare that it's actually worth building it. it it's, it's a pretty cheesy item. Maybe it's good at clowning on noobs, maybe. Um, normally it's not an item that's going to get a ton of value because normally you should just get punished hard enough that you're not going to proc it like crazy and you're normally going to get at least CC'd enough or fought from range enough that you're not just going to be sitting on their face spamming that while, while you're just some sort of immortal tank. With these damage changes coming through where hunters should be hitting weaker, mages should be hitting way weaker, assassins should be hitting a decent amount weaker, and you're playing a tank that's going to be relatively tankier, that infused sigil is not getting nerfed in terms of its damage. So... And, and it looks like Bluestone's not either, and it looks like Sundering's not either, which those are going to be smaller numbers that come out more frequently. I guess Sundering's not more frequently. Sundering can be a big number, but a Bluestone's going to come out smaller and less frequently. Infused might go a little crazy in some of these games. I'm just going to put it out there. That can do 600 fizz damage. That It might go a little crazy. Yeah, these nerfs are pretty normal. Bluestone eating a pretty be decent chunk of its power, 45 to 30, but its passive is still intact, which is what you care about. Archmages from 120 to 85. Ouch. 90 to 60. Okay. 10 per 10 to 7 per 10. So this is with full mana, which you tend to have around. 130 power still. But it used to be 190. That's it. That's a big chunk. That's a big chunk to Pendulum. So with these changes, by the way, with these changes, another thing where some of these nerves I feel like are missing the spot just a little bit. Um... Which, which honestly, okay, maybe missing this mod a little bit. In some ways, it's fine. Some of these items are items that aren't as good as they could be and have other alternatives. But for Pendulum, for example, this item used to be 190 power, 20% cooldown. Absolutely stupid stat stick, right? Absolutely stupid for an upgrade. It's now going all the way down to potential 130 plus 20% cooldown, um, which which is in line with the nerfs, but that's, that's a big nerf, right? Gem of Focus would give you 100 power, a little bit of health, and you'd get up to 15% bonus damage, 15% move speed. Now, normally the reason you would build Gem of Focus is not even for the bonus damage because you got so much power from Pendulum. You got an extra 90 power over Gem of Focus that even if you built up that 15% bonus damage, a lot of the time it didn't matter. And you had to build it up and you have to be on a god that's going to be able to keep building it up and keep that stacked, right? Um, so normally you would build it for the move speed. Normally you'd build it on a god that is capable of spamming but doesn't have like a Thoth dash or some like Agni dash or some sort of good mobility. Like Merlin um, has his three, so he doesn't need it. If you don't have that good mobility, then being able to spam stuff on somebody like Morgan, Vulcan, someone like that, where you can keep that gem of focus stacked and zoom, that was the incentive to build it. But since it's going down to 70 power, which doesn't feel nearly as big as going down the entire 60 power drop that Pendulum went down, and its passive stays just as good, it's going to be relatively better. And that should be fine because Gemma Focus was basically overall worse and just occasionally worth building instead. Um, but some of these changes are kind of like, are they actually intentionally doing this or is it something where it's going to just kind of get a sleeper buff that they're not thinking about compared to other items, you know? But don't get me wrong, like it's it's hard to balance the entire item tree. When, when, you, when you nerf every item in Smite, it's hard to keep them all balanced, right? So, so just something to keep in mind. You get, you're going to get some stuff like that. Uh... Who cares? Nobody buys Hidden Blade. Come on, who, Mannequin sucks. Mannequin still sucks. Who cares? Looks like it's not getting a change to not suck. Really should have gotten a change to not suck. Ooh, passive CC immunity gets a almost two times buff on Absolution. Maybe people will actually build it now. Absolution's such a funky item. I think it's such a cool idea, but it's so difficult to actually make it do the thing that you want it to do. Decreased number of stacks required. Okay, I saw, for some reason I saw this as nine, and I was like, what the hell? This is not this hard to stack. Decreased internal cooldown from 30 to 15 on Amulet of Silence. That's interesting. Makes it more of a viable option now. If you can actually just stack it up and do it again. That's pretty interesting. Internal cooldown on Archdruid from 15 to 10. Archdruid getting a buff. Kind of surprised by that. Cyclopean gets... Wow! Cyclopean actually gets kind of a buff where like the nerf doesn't matter and then it gets a passive buff. That's interesting. Maybe bring the Mage ADCs back a bit. Dawnbringer. 
Ooh! Increased passive prots and move speed from 5 to 10 now caps at 3 enemy guns. So basically the way this works, I don't remember exactly. I think it's like when you ult enemies around you, don't remember how big the range is, will buff your prot and move speed by before what would have been up to 25% for the entire enemy team. Now it's up to 30% for 3 guns. So when you're dealing with smaller numbers, it gets a very significant boost. If you somehow are just in the middle of their entire team, then it gets still a little bit of a buff, but less like not not anything too crazy, right? Because you're just capping off the three gods. That's uh that's a big Dawnbringer buff. I wonder if Dawnbringer will actually feel kind of good now. And it didn't eat big nerfs here or anything. It it might actually feel kind of good on some gods. That'd be cool. I think because Dawnbringer is a cool concept for an item. It's just not good. All right, Frostbound. Yeah, makes sense. Gem of Iso. Yeah, they're getting a little bit of a nerf to, or a little bit of a buff to their cooldowns, but of course they're getting damage nerfs. So you're able to proc those a little more often. Hasten gets cheaper. Hasten loses a decent bit of stats. Decrease stacks required to get the CR from 2 to 1. Wow. Decrease CR applied to the next ability from 25% to 20%. Uh, okay. This might actually, this might actually do quite a bit. Increase HP threshold to trigger. Eh, sure. Okay. Man, of course, Spikes gets a little bit of a buff to its passive. Does Stona Gaia not suck now? Does Stona Gaia not suck? Does Stona Gaia gets a little bit better. Wow. A little bit better for Stona Gaia. Oh my. Okay, okay. Decrease sex. I thought they just straight up made Talisman passive even stronger. The issue with Talisman passive is not that the passive is bad. It's actually nutty. Um, It's just keeping it. It's just it's just being around minions to proc it. A lot of time you're not. Where When it matters, you'd want that like mid-FG fight. You're not going to be able to stack it mid-FG fight. So... Yeah, just easier to stack now. Sure, it's fine. Telkines gets a little bit of a revert, so it's now going to be plus three per level damage instead of plus two per level damage. So Telkines getting quite a bit of a buff. Definitely seeing Mage ADCs come back a bit right now with these changes. Um, right now they suck, so that's fine. I mean, you guys remember the Freya video, right? I was like, rings blow? High Red's trying to undo that a little bit, where they're not getting hit too hard by the nerfs, and they're actually getting little buffs to their passives as well, which this is actually a pretty decent buff. The Cyclopean one matters less. This is actually a pretty big buff to, to Telkines. But Telkine sucks right now, so that's probably fair. Um, nimble. Wait. Decrease the amount of power needed for each tank of attack speed. So you can still get the same amount of attack speed from Nimble as before. Okay. Um, It's, yeah, it's probably going to be around as hard to get Nimble stacked as it was before. With the, with the changes is basically what they're going for. Hard Seeker down to 45 power. Decrease passive power requirement from 200 to 150 and 350 to 300. So late game, with all these nerfs going through late game, it is going to be harder to get that full heart seeker value than it was before. That's something to keep in mind. Um, I think this initial value is not going to be as big of a shift. This one is is still 300 is a lot with these changes going through. That's a lot of power to get now. Like it used to be, you could build Blood Forge, you could build Erendite. That is halfway to 300 right there. You know, it was three, it was 350 they had to get to, but still, that's halfway to 300. Now that is not remotely true. Now it's a third of the way. So that's a big change right there. Um, nobody cares about Lonos. This is actually a big change. Hang on. <laughs> this, is actually a, this is actually a lot. Decrease damage mitigation per stack from three to two. Decrease prods per stack from seven to four. That's that's a lot. Um, surprise. I don't think Lonos is that good normally, right? Rangda's getting hit. Nobody builds Rangda's. It's fine. Ooh, interesting. So the tank Acorn's feeling a little better, maybe? Because of this? Yeah, it probably doesn't matter that much. Uh, Blue Stone a little bit cheaper. Okay, getting that 650 that a lot of other starters have. That'll feel kind of good. Bumba's getting a little more power and a little more HP gain. And this one's important. This is one that the stat didn't make a lot of sense that magic power was as low as it was. Magic power getting an extra big buff. That's good for Bumba's. That's something I've been noticing lately um, where if I want to play a mage jungle like Hebo, early game I feels better because I, if I remember right, gives either 25 or 30 magic power compared to the Bumba's 15. I think it was 30. And just straight up doubling its power like that, that is that is a big difference, right? So so making it almost the same as I, if not maybe the same as I, because I don't remember for sure if it was 25 or 30. That's actually really, really helpful. And Bumba's just isn't good right now, so that's fine. Less move speed on Wing Shard. Seems fair. Decrease move speed on Bracer. Sure. Trying to make the, the boys a little less zoomy, huh? Maybe, maybe we don't give them that 3% move speed off the stupid thing that they added. Maybe we don't do that. It's only 3%. It'll probably be okay. Decrease power buff on Bracer, brilliant. Really? Bracer eating a big nerf? It's not that good, is it? It's getting used in SPL. I don't think it's, like, game-breaking or anything. I don't think it's all that crazy. 
All right. Um. Oh boy. Oh. Oh. This is huge. This is good. This is good. Okay. So let's dive into a little bit of stuff. All right. Let's dive into a little bit of stuff. Pen changes. So uh, tanks were sucking. So high res decided to nerf pen. The issue with that is that pen was not the problem. Basically, the problem was that there was simply so much damage in the game that you could build and that tanks were not capable of doing damage because they did no longer. They no longer had power on items. So far from these changes they have been making, they have not fixed that for tanks. Tanks are still going to be fairly focused on having gods like Hercules and Guan. And we haven't seen god balance changes yet, but Hercules, Guan, gods that are capable of either doing a lot of damage by existing or even have power in their passives or other abilities in order to hit hard with autos as well because you can't really build power aside from your starter slash starter upgrade in the solo lane unless you're committing to a full damage item for it. Um... Because the power health items suck, pretty much, right? So that's the way that you do damage from the solo lane. Um, so what tanks had this issue was where they don't hit hard late game, unless you're playing the metagods, they just don't hit hard. Um, normally the metagods would still hit hard. Guan, Herc, those guys, like they're actually capable of doing enough damage that they're fine. Vamana for sure, Vamana's disgusting. Um, but they'd get melted fairly hard by how strong stats are at the moment. I mean, we got Doom Orb up to like, what, 145 before this patch with passive? 145 power on Doom Orb, that's crazy, right? So a lot of items were getting really, really strong for damage dealers. Tanks had defense that were around the same as it had pretty much always been. So then tanks are getting hit extra hard while they have missed out on power on items like Land Shield, so they're hitting weaker. And then Bluestone's been getting nerfed over the season. Sundering's been getting nerfed over the season. Contagion, but fuck Contagion. They can remove it from the game. So that's fine. But still, Contagion gets nerfed hard too. And all these different items that they would basically build to abuse procs because they couldn't do damage because Hyrus doesn't want to give warriors power, which is stupid. That makes you have to build proc items instead or just build OP gods that they don't know how to nerf. That's basically where it was. Where to either simply do the meta god, get clapped. Gotta pick one. You got, you got to pick one. You got to do Metagon or get clapped. And so to try and make up for it, they nerf Pen so that Warriors would feel tankier. But the issue is, even by nerfing Pen, Xe still exists. Xe just prot shreds. You can just build a lot of Pen items anyways. You can have Kin Size, which was still absolutely disgusting. Mages got hit by this a lot harder than Hunters did because Kin Size is insane and procs all the time. You get so many autos. You get two and a half per, um, autos per second with the full attack speed build. Kin Size can do 6% HP and Hunters can build the most pen by going Xe, Dom, and Titan's Bane, which would give you 32% pen, Kin Size, and 24% prot shred from Xe so that you're absolutely melting tanks with an item that does, what would the math be? If we're ignoring the prots, Kin Size is doing 15% of your health per second with a full attack speed build. Somebody's honking outside. Sorry, I don't know. Shut up! Shut up! They're not that close. They're not going to hear me. Um, so, yeah, like you could delete tanks with, with ADCs, right? Mages, that's not the same. Soul Reaver was going to be overall less damage because you're getting a nerf from subsequent hits, which Kin Size does not have. Not saying Kin Size necessarily should have it, but you got to keep in mind Soul Reaver did similar damage to Kin Size, but you're ner but it's nerfing itself, and obviously you are casting fewer abilities on a tank than you are autoing um, than than auto attacks on a tank, right? Like that's just that just makes sense, right? You're going to auto way more often than you cast entire abilities. Abilities tend to be AOE and have big cooldowns, right? Um, so mages have fewer pen options because they don't have a percent reduction item like Xe. They just don't like even if they still had void stone. OK, but you nerf your damage by going void stone and the prot shred is nowhere close to Xe. So they don't have that. They can build pen other than that about just as well. And then Soul Reaver is way worse. So mages can't deal with tanks all that well. Hunters can deal with tanks insanely well, which should partially be true. Hunters are actually a role that makes sense to deal with tanks. But there's a massive difference there. Hunters can dumpster tanks. Mages actually struggle with tanks like even even right now before this patch goes through. Um, with this patch going through some of the stuff that we're seeing happen to soul reaver is getting, uh, is getting, um, fixed a little bit for mages. We're like, okay, soul reaver before was a big item that mages needed to be able to deal with tanks. It's getting hit pretty hard. Um, where early game, it's going to be feeling a lot less valuable and stuff, and it's going to be worse for squishies. So that's going to be kind of tricky, but the pen should help a lot. And that should make kin size a little less relatively impactful and soul reaver a little less important. And you can build some of that pen so that mages can do more. If that makes sense. That that percent pen matters more for mages than it does for hunters. 
by the way, apparently they just did this. So that that's a little weird. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm catching this now that they actually buffed Xy a little bit. I don't I don't think that was necessary, but OK. Um, but that's just that's that's important. It's, it's very important for mages to have those those good percent pen options to deal with the tanks because hunters are inherently so much better at shredding through the tanks to begin with. Because kin size is so good, and high res normally just hasn't been hitting it. And kin size is still very good versus tanks, it's just worse versus squishies, and that's going to be a, a big difference, right? So, yeah. Anyways, 32% pen to 40% pen like before. Items are going to have 20% if they had 16%. They're going to have 10% if they had 8%. Basically just an entire revert of these recent pen changes because they're doing a much bigger change instead with similar goals of making tanks tankier, damage dealers doing less damage, so that damage dealers do less damage to each other. They do less damage to tanks. Tanks feel better. Uh, but pen can come back and, you know, do actual pen things. Um, yeah. Kiss getting a decent nerf to his late game move speed. Probably a good change. That's that's quite a bit of move speed. Hachi not eating all that big of a nerf. Uh, he's going to still be feeling very good. Like this, this is something, um, especially to his early game. This 10 flat is, is quite a bit. He's he's still going to be feeling really good late game with the 50 flat boost and only 5% off his auto scaling. This This is a big part of Hachi hitting so hard right now is this flat damage added onto his autos. And keep in mind that this is also flat damage that stands out more now with all these item nerfs going through, by the way. Uh, let's move speed on Hell 3, especially to herself. No! This is bit, wait, why do they even do this? <laughs> why did they? Uh, I guess it kind of makes sense. Why did they not make it a cleaner number, man? What the hell's wrong? Hi, Rez, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you, you little weirdos? <laughs> this is such a random 44 make it nerf him harder man make it 40 my eyes why the hell is it 40 who did that who did mm. somebody needs a talk this is triggered i don't even have ocd and this triggers me i'm not remotely ocd it's just just make it 40 man i love tear make it 40 i don't care make this 10 i don't care or 15 or i don't know oh. mm. i don't know about that i don't know about that it's not that it's a bad change, it's just so ugly. Um, oh, this is a big change. Okay. Decrease base duration of Vamana ult from 6 to 4. Decrease max duration of the ability from taking damage from 10 to 8. Vamana is still absurdly tanky. He can dive tower as hard as he wants. Hmm. All right, high res. This is a big nerf to how much he can potentially get done with that ultimate, which is great. Uh, one of the big problems with this ultimate is if you play Vamana ADC, like you guys might have seen me done when I played Vamana ADC like a week or two ago, uh, you can just walk into tower with Vamana ult, kill somebody and walk out and you cannot take damage. And I am not kidding. And towers are really OP right now. So that goes to show how OP Vamana ult is. They can auto you back. It doesn't matter. You can get absolutely stupid amounts of shield from Vamana ult. It's, it's so ridiculous, man. Let's move speed on Riptide. Uh, bigger execute for Achilles. Wow, that's pretty strong for him. <gasps> oh, 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 that's a huge buffer on her. Oh my God. So increase base attack speed. If you guys don't know, I brought this up maybe when we played on her last. If you guys don't know the way this works, when you have a base attack speed like this, this scales the attack speed you get from items. Normally this, this attack speed is not so much lower, so it doesn't stand out. But if I build Oboe, on on her, which gives us 30% attack speed, and my base attack is only 0.9 instead of 1, I get 27% attack speed from Oboe. I nerf every attack speed item that I buy for myself, because it scales off of this. Is it dumb that it scales off this? Probably. It should probably just straight up flat give you the amount that it says it does. I feel like that's really troll. It's something that you normally don't notice, because normally this attack speed is going to be like 0.98. You're going to miss out on so little or maybe like 1.0 something. So like you're, it's normally going to be so negligible you don't notice it. So not only is on her inherently getting 10% more attack speed to start the game, which is a lot, but now all of his items are getting 10% more of their own stats actually to himself. So if he builds kin size, he gets 2% more attack speed than he used to. If he builds oboe, he gets 3% more attack speed than he used to. If he pops wing shard, he gets 4% more attack speed than he used to. That's that's a lot. And then they also buff the slow a little bit. Damn. Huge on her buff. For some reason, they decided Mez needs to last longer. It did used to last, I think, almost almost exactly this long. But Jesus, man, it's two seconds. Of, like, it's fine. It's fine. But Apollo's not good, so who cares? Um, increased move speed on the three. All right. It's kind of kind of weird since they're taking off a lot of move speed. More power scaling on art three. One of these. Oh, and the cool. Wow, that's a big change to this cooldown. Um, 
One of these days, R3 is going to actually do damage, and they're they're really working it their way out there. I swear, unless I'm losing it, I swear this, I, I think this ability at one point did less than 50% of her power. Nobody could ever possibly explain to me a reason that makes any sense for that to be true. I'm pretty sure this at one point did less than 50% of Art's power. I don't even like Art. I don't really care if she's good. It's all it's one of those things where like it sometimes there's like balance changes that just kind of stay. I guess they're not changes. There's balance that stays that blows my mind. And that was that was one of them. I swear this used to be so low. So they're getting up there. Art getting some love. Finally starting to do damage with our three late game. How cool is that? Belch gets two two seconds less cooldown. Bacchus mains living good. Bastet mains ban them. Ban them. Are you kidding me? This cat is already so annoying. I have to auto it again. Oh my god. That's actually so I hate oh I hate the three. I hate the stupid Bastet cat so much. It's so good into certain matchups. Such an obnoxious thing to deal with. Let's deploy a pet on their face. Everybody loves dealing with pets. Everybody loves Calder, Nene, Kappa, and Bastet 3. We definitely shouldn't just remove them from the game. Oh my god. Increased duration on the CC Moon? Sure. Cool. Let Chiron do more with that. That's fun. Uh, less cooldown for clean and passive. Little bit less damage taken in clean and passive. The cooldown reduction is going to be the big thing. This doesn't matter that much. You shouldn't really take that much damage in clean and passive. Like, like, sure, do it. I don't care, but <laughs> it, it shouldn't be too big of a change. Um, increased stun duration for Don's Rocket as he levels it up. That's cool. Ooh, wow. Decreased cooldown of Discordia 2, which also keeping in mind, Discordia has some crazy cooldown reduction in her 3, and you're tending to build cooldown to begin with. That's going to stand out extra because of that. That's, uh, that's big. Erlang getting buffs. Erlang, longer route, more damage mitigation, more damage from passive. That'll help him a lot. Um, he still shouldn't be good. But that, that will actually help him a lot. Those are big buffs. Look look who was talking about how bad Wing Gust is. Wing Gust getting a buff. Not enough to make it good, but <laughs> but getting a bit of a buff, so it scales harder. Increased rage. What? Fafnir gets to be a dragon for a minute late game. For a minute. Wow. Again, Fafnir not good. Sure, go for it. That is a big buff. Wow. That's crazy, man. You just get to live as a dragon. Fafnir mains living real good. Increase shield duration from two to four from uh, from two to four to three to five. Big buff, really really big buff. Increase base damage from one ten to five fifty to one twenty to five eighty. Okay. Okay, that's I don't know. I don't, I don't think that really matter, matters much, but okay. Do you? A little bit more damage for who you ricochet, so you can maybe clear wave finally. Nice. Early game, this part probably doesn't matter so much. Like obviously you'll you'll feel it a little bit, but like I don't think it's like necessary. Uh, what does stand out is the, the 25 extra at max rank. Who you ricochet is an ability that tends to not one-shot wave. It will probably still tend to not one-shot wave, but you might sometimes be able to one-shot wave. So that'll be nice. Oh boy. Oh boy. What are they? Okay, this is like nothing. That's fine. That's fine. Your shell gets a little more. Oh wait. Oh, early game it's getting the buff. I see. I see. I saw this. I saw it go up by too late game and didn't care. That's actually big. You shell hit so potato at rank one. That's that is a very big buff that'll stand out a lot. Um Bro. <laughs> you know what I would have loved? You know what I would have loved when I see Janice come up in the patch notes? I would have loved, we missed the mark. We fucked up. We should not have given Janice a pen item for his passive by leveling his ultimate. And you know what they said? They said, we have reverted the pen change. So naturally, we need to buff this baby back up in line with those pen changes. Oh my, this is so stupid, Sir Cat Passive Stupid too. please. Please. If you guys want to give Janice some love, just buff his abilities, man. Or rework him a little bit. Only a little bit. Don't worry, Janice mains. I'm not trying to come after your Janice. Ugh. Bro, don't give people big chunks of stats like this. If you're going to do it, put it in abilities where it makes sense. Don't just be like, Janice has a pen item by being Janice. Janice is a little too bad. He needs pen. Oh my god, man. Just make, like, make his three give him more bonus damage, or, or give, make his two hit harder, his ult hit harder, just something. Just do something else. This is so bad. I don't know why they ever did this. I feel like they're going to add more if they're keeping this. Ugh. I, don't, I would be mind blown if anybody thinks this is good, that is not just a Janus player profiting, or a Sir Cat player that realizes it's the same thing. I would be mind blown, man. Just make changes to the God's kit without adding this stupid shit. Just buff him. That's how you that's how you buff everybody else. Why do you why do you feel the need to do this, man? Um anyways, anyways. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 
Decrease cooldown from 15 to 13 to 15 to 11 on Slipstream for Kukulkin. Man gets to two a lot more often. Man's still probably going to be bad, but that does help. Gets more, more access to his mobility. Damage mitigation buffed a lot on Kukul um, not Kukulkin, Kuzumbo ult. So he'll feel that. A little bit of a buff to the two, especially early game. Kuzumbo's still going to suck because Kuzumbo's just bad. Oh, I thought they said they were removing this from every god. I was going to be like, holy shit, they really undid that. Okay. I don't, I don't even know what those were before that they took off. Increased move speed and basic attack damage reduction from 0.2% per stack to 0.3% per stack on the um, passive for, for Lancelot. So pretty big shift. Basically what he's getting to do with that horsey. I guess also with the shield because this is like um, trying to think how does this work? This is for the horse. This is for the, the normal stance, right? If I remember right. And then increased physical power scaling from 60 to 65% on his one. Not too big of a change. Extra duration on Loki two. Little bit of extra damage on Loki 3. That's not very important. That's gonna do super little. Increased attack speed. This is a revert. Um, if I remember right. For for Medusa, Medusa getting a lot of love. So early gamer one is still very strong, as it should be, but up to that 80% stim while she fires those autos, and then also buffing the damage of her one. So Medusa feeling way better with that change, which is nice. Medusa, I think Medusa's a fun god. She's a little cringe to play against, because sometimes it's just like, I am losing lane. Medusa hit her dash on me. I just die. She just, her one is popped. She twos me at the same time. I I am just, she doesn't even need ult. I'm just dead. She can be kind of cringe, but it's cool to see her be a little more playable. Um, Little cooldown buff to the three and two for Mulan. Ooh, okay. Poseidon getting attack speed, not a ton. Um, Maybe honestly should be giving him more and then like nerfing the damage of it or something. It would maybe make sense, but five to 15% attack speed in his two. So a little, little love for Poseidon too. Extra prop from Rahil, sure. Makes this number make sense. That's the, that's the important thing. Let's get this 26 out of here. Um, same thing for the power. Yeah, so like the, the, the tier thing that I complained about because it's just kind of like, why is this number so ugly? It looks like they ironically undid it for Raw. So I don't know why they couldn't just do it for tier. <laughs> I don't know why they couldn't just keep it not ugly for tier, man. Uh, increased damage per tick on the target that was initially marked with Raiju from 15 to 55 plus 13% to 20 to 60 plus... 15%. I'm a, I think they just wrote this weird. I think plus 15% is what they mean. Um, okay, not, not that big of a change. Extra health shield for Robin. That's actually a pretty pretty big bit. Extra 2% per stack. And a big cooldown nerf to his 3. Or cooldown buff, I guess I should say, to his 3. So 2 seconds off that. No way. Okay, 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 okay. I, I, I misread this for a sec. Um, still, I'm a, I'm a little surprised. Set getting a buff. That, yeah, that, that's for me. That's for me. Set getting a buff to his two um, and an inherent cooldown change to his two. What's interesting about this is this makes it way more viable to level his three now. This is something for set where um, not only do you buff your skewer damage by leveling your two, but you lower the cooldown on it. And if you are now getting that cooldown at max rank to begin with and you get no cooldown incentive, you can make an argument that you should level the three on set instead of leveling the two. So you'll max the one, you'll have a point in the two at some point early on, um, and then you'll max the three after that. And uh, that could be that could be pretty spicy. Like, it's, it's definitely not like a huge thing where it's like you have to max the three now or anything like that, but but it's kind of interesting that it gives you a little flexibility there. Where there, I'm sure there should be plenty of spots where you'll actually get more value out of leveling the three now. Realistically, it's probably still better to do this in, in a lot of circumstances, but like it's probably capable of leveling the three that's kind of cool for me for me as somebody that loves set right um aura slash or like buff slash debuff big big buffs here for uh for shiva eight plus 0.5 to 12 plus 0.5 four to six ten percent or ten second cooldown i guess it's also ten percent reduction on the ultimate cooldown sure i don't know if it's gonna matter that much for shiva i don't remember exactly how this part works so i don't know if that stands out a ton but it's probably kind of nice because four hp five slash mp5 it's, it's something, right? Scotty ult gonna hit harder on the initial tick of Snowstorm. Ooh. I don't want Scotty hitting hard, but I don't think she's that good. So, that's fine. Uh, two second cooldown reduction to the one. One second cooldown reduction to the two and the three for Sobek. Ooh, that is big buffs for Sobek that nobody plays because he's bad, for the most part. He's pretty bad right now. That's, that that definitely does help him quite a bit. Um, Wukong passive procs a little sooner. <laughs> Hyra's always got to keep that Wukong passive as OP as they can, huh? Like, this passive is so dumb, man. I don't remember the stats off the top of my head right now. It's such a good passive. It's always so funny to me when they buff it. They don't need to buff it. it it's so good. 
They don't need to buff it up. If you want to buff Wukong, buff other stuff. His pass is stupid. He's already dumb in lane the moment that thing procs. Increase the slow on Caltrops. Nobody's going to have a fun time with that. Um, attack speed and bow stance going up for Uller 5 flat. Lifesteal and Axe Dance going up, wow, quite a bit. Up to 10% at max rank. Axe Dance feeling way better for that little out of combat sustain. Or even in combat, but a lot of time it's like, go jump on camp, axe it a question, and then come back with health. That's going to be a big difference right now. Uh, wow. Spam that turret, baby. Vulcan, a four-second cooldown reduction on the two. I, I kind of like the idea of this, because Vulcan turret is something that's pretty easy to just kill in a lot of situations, especially early game. And then... He just doesn't have turret for a bit. I kind of like the idea. Four seconds is a crazy amount to buff it by. They, they might go too far. I don't know if it'll matter that much. Turret tends to not be that insane. Um, like if you're honestly like any good at smite, it's just pretty easy to deal with the turret in just about any circumstance. So yeah. Oh, and we're pretty much through, which is good because I'm dying a little bit right now. Um, big buff to the hook slam for Xing Chan. Prop buff to Zhang passive, which I think this is exactly what it used to be at once upon a time. That could be wrong. And that does it. So, what happened this patch? They added a bunch of new stuff to Conquest. By the way, I'm probably not going to plug anything for reference, because uh, I don't think it matters. All that. No, you know what? No, I'll try, and, I'll try and plug. I'll try and plug. Which you guys will have seen already if you got to here, but I haven't seen because I'm still recording this before I've seen batch notes. But if I can find a reference for the Unleashed Titans, because in my head I was thinking it's not that big of a deal. It's a pretty big deal. Um, to show, what are they called? The Stygian, what the hell is it? Okay, basically, the, the, the Ghost Circle, we will show Ghost Circle. The, the King of the Hill, we will show the King of the Hill. And then uh, the Unleashed Titans are by far the coolest. Obviously have to show that. Other than that, I'm trying to think, like, there aren't really changes that matter that much. Maybe I'll be able to show you guys a little bit of the map update that's changed. I don't, I don't think it's going to be anything crazy, um, aside from those new, new objectives they added. So, so things to consider with the, the balance changes, because that's the big focus of this patch. There's a lot of balance changes coming through. Uh, we are going back to the old Fire Giant days. So, um, Fire Giant is going to be lasting four minutes instead of three minutes. Very big to have that extra minute. You got to keep in mind, a lot of the time, Fire Giant, you're also backing, um, heading out of base, and a lot of the time, getting all the way to Tier 2, which on its own, especially in a less coordinated setting than something like SPL or High Level Ranked, that alone will take at least a minute. A lot of the time, I know I'm talking to a lot of you right now. A lot of the time, you guys might fuck around a little bit in the jungle. You might do every buff you can possibly find, like that fire giant timer doesn't matter one bit, and you'll be at least an extra 30 seconds late to that one minute, meaning you have about one and a half minutes of fire giant, EFG, FG, whatever, um, whichever version it may be, have one and a half minutes of it on that prior patch. Now, you will have two and a half minutes of it. Now, you'll have a lot more time to work with for sieging, so that you can even have things go a little wrong and actually kind of step back, reset, maybe even go all the way back to base, regroup, and try again. A um, lot more potential to work with that Fire Giant for sieging. For me, it's kind of funky. I actually, for the most part, I like the, uh, the Fire Giant changes they made. I like that time where you really have to make the use of it. I think that's fun, where it's like, let's get it done. This is a power play that doesn't last forever. Um, I thought it was cool that it was shorter, However, as somebody that's played a lot of ranked and gotten triggered at a lot of teammates, I, I definitely recognize that there's a lot of a coordination um, difficulty there where I think in SPL, they can normally get things done with it. In more coordinated settings, they can definitely get things done with that shorter FG timer, and I think it's cool. But when you get the less coordinated and the people that aren't paying so much attention and you're kind of just waiting for your teammates to do anything and you're maybe spam pinging them and they're still doing their buffs anyways, when you're getting that, then this newer Fire Giant time, which is really just the old Fire Giant time from season nine and like every season before it, is going to feel way better, where it's way easier to actually get things done and your teammates can mess around a little bit and you can get away with it. You, you don't have to just be like, let's focus up and let's get it done. It's a little less serious now. Um, more opportunity. So so that's a thing. Of course, they have all these new objectives coming in that'll be interesting. Definitely going to seem like the, the new ghost thing they're adding. I can't think of the name right now. Um, the, the soul fountain, whatever the hell it is, is uh, is probably going to be very strong for getting that. Like whenever that is available to get, getting that initial kill, taking advantage, maybe getting a little bit of farm, buffing yourself for any potential fight right there. Um, and then also denying the other team those benefits when you get that. That's probably going to be a pretty big deal. I'm definitely a little scared to see how that's going to impact 
I think the Unleashed Titan concept is very cool. I think that'll be fun. A lot of time, if you are stomping a game, that is just going to give you an extra potential to get it done so that you're not getting into a super deep game when you deserve to win early game. They're not going to be able to sit under that Phoenix as easily. You're going to get a lot of value out of that Unleashed Titan. Um, and if they do push up and fight, they're behind at an earlier stage of the game where it matters more and you're going to be able to take advantage of that fight. And like, if you lose, you basically just got like skill diff in that fight, right? Um, and the King of the Hill thing, it seems like really like that, I'm not sure how fun it'll be. We'll have to see like what it actually plays like. I'm really hard to picture that right now. It doesn't look like it'll be so impactful that it's like, if you're not playing King of the Hill well, you lose the game. Like it, does, it doesn't look like that big of a deal. Um, but obviously it'll matter at least somewhat, right? You're getting some farm. You're getting bonus objective damage. It's definitely something you want to look for a little bit. Um, and honestly, like maybe depending on how long it is to capture, there might even be times where it's like, okay, they can take the King of the Hill. Let's do Gold Fury. And we just straight up get a bigger reward. You might get some stuff like that that'll be kind of interesting. And then, of course, for item changes, like I already talked about as we went through the patch notes, um, Assassins, I think, are mostly looking pretty good. Arendite, Bloodforge, Heartseeker, some of those items did get pretty big nerfs, but Assassins are, are generally a role that's capable of doing a lot of damage through base damage, um, through penetration, and just kind of doing like a CC damage combo with their kit, where a lot of them are still going to feel really good. They don't tend to need to scale up a crazy amount. Some of those gods like Susano, um, Honestly, Susana is the best example. There's got to be some others I'm trying to think. Kalina, those more damage focused, very high scaling assassins that can get ridiculous. Some of those in a way will be feeling worse where they're not going to scale up to those stupid numbers. However, their biggest problem tended to be ADCs and mages scaling up to stupid numbers. They are also eating nerfs, typically bigger nerfs, um, where ADCs, especially to crit, are going to tend to be hitting way weaker. Um... Overall, ADCs aren't hitting that much weaker, but especially to crit. Also, Kinsai is hitting way weaker versus those squishies. Mage is eating massive power nerves. So that before, you maybe had trouble where it's like, oh, I can now one-shot absurdly hard on Susano, but I got hit by two mage abilities, so I'm dead. Now it'll be three mage abilities, which makes it way easier, and you still might be able to do basically the same thing on Susano, where it's like, yeah, you ate power nerves, but you kind of have to kit dump anyway, so it doesn't matter that much, right? So, Assassin should be feeling pretty good. Hunters should mostly be feeling pretty good versus tanks, and generally in the late game, However, kin size is going to do way less damage to squishies all game. If you are a squishy, if you do not have that big chunk of health, kin size damage is halved. And it's now, you now need more health to even get to the part where it starts scaling. So squishy is feeling way better into that. Hunters are going to be doing less damage. Hunters might feel a little more incentivized to go crit against that. Spectral still exists. Spectral can still counter that. Um, otherwise, they're just going to be doing less damage to squishies. They didn't need as many other overall item nerfs, so that doesn't tend to matter so much. Um, but kins did eat a big nerf. And then other than that, like they'll still do well versus tanks. And finally, mages are getting clapped. Mages doing way less damage, probably to everybody, basically. They still have pen options for tanks, but Soul Reaver is getting nerfed, but they do have good pen options with Obsidian, with Typhons, with uh, with Chiron's Coin. But their power got hit by far the hardest out of any class. Mages hitting way weaker in the late game. It really might have been too much. And if it is too much, I hope high res compensates really quickly and gives like a 10% buff or something. Like undoes, undoes like almost half of the nerf that they've done overall to the items where it's like if an item lost 30 power maybe buff it up another 15 from what it lost to make up for it if that ends up being a big problem so mage is going to do way less damage to squishies and to tanks it'll probably feel like too much we'll have to see on that um i am i am feeling kind of like maybe it'll turn out it's okay but i am feeling kind of bad for for mid mains right now for mage players i i do really think it, they are getting clapped in this update and i'm kind of surprised they're getting so clapped um Trying to think. Other than that, obviously, support and solo feeling better right now, obviously. Um, I don't think with support it will stand out as much. Support already tends to feel pretty tanky right now. It will feel tankier, of course, since the prot items are getting nerfed way less. But support's role is mostly CC, utility, stuff like that. It's not going to be like, you're never in a support meta. Like, like well, you're never in a support meta. You are never like, oh my god, support is so OP. And even if you are, even if you're like me and you're like, there's a problem with building 100 prot auras on support they just nerfed prophetic so that happened too but support should be feeling really good right now where you're tanky you're impactful of course you're not killing the team you are support solo lane on the other hand bluestone doing as much as it did before um they are trying to bring power health items a little bit more into the meta and bring pridwin into the meta which is actually more of a tank item but it's like it's kind of a hybrid idea the idea that they have where we need to build items with some sort of like proc instead of just giving power to warriors, I think is really dumb. I think that they could do away with a lot of procs and give warriors some power 
and that will make warriors feel consistent and make it way less focused on I am playing the god that abuses procs well. If you guys remember the beginning of the season when warriors felt ridiculously strong for doing damage, the reason they felt ridiculously strong was Arch Druid, I think that's what it's called, the item that would do like 350 true damage on an auto attack from having taken damage. That's ridiculous. That is a proc. You would have Sundering when Sundering was at its best state. Against other tanks, it could do like 700 and heal you, by the way. 700 true damage too because it's just yoinking. Versus Squishies, it could do like two to 300 all in one big chunk. That is ridiculous. That is a proc. And it had Contagion before it got nerfed and was ridiculous, which is just a stupid item to begin with. But like that could do like 200 damage and it could bug off of teammates, and it was AoE, and that was a CC, that was you CCing them, and that was a proc. So those, those were the big things. And Bluestone was good back then, but Sundering was good enough that a lot of, a lot of time you'd build Sundering back then. Um, those are all just abusing procs late game on solo. That, that, that was what you were doing. That was when it was good. So that obviously that was cringe, right? Like we can agree. I think most solo laners will agree that wasn't particularly fun, but at least you were better. And then anybody playing against it probably hated it because it was really dumb. Um, I think really obviously the issue is procs are dumb, give them power, let them do consistent damage that will apply throughout all of the warriors instead of just abusing the item that your warrior happens to be able to use well um, and relying on that item being just kind of OP at the moment, right? So we're still going to have procs in their current state, which is way better than that state I was just referring to. We're still going to have those. That's still not really where solo lane should be. We are still going to have that same issue where a lot of these Hercules did not get nerfed in this patch, right? Like, am I, I don't think he got changed at all. I don't think I saw Hercules anywhere. Vamana got nerfed a bit, but he should still be good. Uh, I say a bit. It was a pretty big nerf, but like his, his ult is so ridiculous right now that even that pretty big nerf, he should still be feeling good. Um, You'll just obviously feel the impact quite a bit. Guan, I think, went unchanged. A lot of those meta solo laners that are like the few you can play are completely the same, and I'm trying to picture any warrior that got buffed. I guess Erling, but Erling sucks. That's the only person I'm... Yeah, I, I think it might have only been Erling that got buffed. So we are still in that same situation as before, where solo lane is very meta in terms of what god you want to play, what god that you can actually play to be highly impactful with, because the god happens to be good with the way that items are currently balanced slash the way that they're balanced. Um, but overall, solo lane is going to eat a huge buff where they are now relatively tankier to before and their damage is going to feel better because DPS damage is going to feel worse. But I, I still feel like they could just, it's like, okay, just buff solo damage and don't hit DPS damage so hard, right? Just just give Glad Shield the 20 power back, the Berserker Shield the 20 power back. It's not that hard. Um, maybe make power health items actually good rather than trying to give them weird glyphs and stuff. Maybe just let them actually do some damage again. I don't know. But um, but yeah, I don't know. That kind of sums up the patch, sums up my thoughts on the patch as well. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video. Of course, it's going to be a super long video. Hopefully I can get some stuff in there to um, show you guys some of the visuals you might want to see in the beginning of the video, which you would have already seen a long time ago now if you actually made it this far. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you all enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next one.